I have two of my dearest friends here joining me and we are very excited about what God is going to share with you uh, through this broadcast. So my awesome friends, Natalie Fuller and Matt Beckenham, thanks for joining me again. Thank you. Great to be here, Lana. Yay. It's always fun doing things like this, isn't it? Especially when coffee's involved. I don't have much left. It's <laughs> 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 where the anointing flows, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, guys, well, I'm excited. I know you guys are too about what God's going to do today. Um, and I know that, like, look, I'm sure everybody that's going to watch this broadcast is going to be like, I know Natalie Fuller and I know Matt. Um, but in case there's anyone new that's watching, Nat, how about you start? Just give us like a two-second rundown of who you are in your life. Sure. I'm Natalie Fuller. <laughs> I, um, I am a mum to four young children married to Gavin, my husband, um, almost 16 years. Um, and we run, well, we kind of run a film and multimedia business, not much happening at the moment, but we're enjoying the quiet time in the in between all that. <laughs> so yeah, that's a bit about me. And um, uh, I love to write and share. <laughs> yeah. And Nat has an amazing new book that is out, which she will tell you about at the end, because it's just awesome. So yay. And Matt. Yep. So I'm Matt. I am uh, father to three ad adult kids now uh, with my wife, Trish. We've been married for 30 years. Uh, we are uh, senior leaders at Haberfield Baptist Church and we do a whole bunch of stuff in hearing the voice of God, the prophetic and doing all kinds of things like that and like this. Awesome. <laughs> well, I got these guys together because I really felt like um, these guys, for those of you that may not be familiar with them, like they so have a heart after God and both of them have their ear upon the chest of the Lord and just are continually, um, you know, we just we text all the time and talking back and forward and just continually um, just flowing in the revelation of his heart for this new era. So we are excited about what God is about to do. Um, we've called this chat uh, the, pro, uh, the Power of the Hidden Place. Um, because we really believe right now that that's one of the things that God is speaking about. Um, so we're going to just have a chat. I know some people call it like a fireside chat. Uh, so that's what this is going to be. And we're just going to flow with the Holy Spirit and uh, and see what he's going to, to say. But I really believe, I was sitting with the Lord this morning, that there is going to not only be clarity and revelation uh, that is going to be given to you, but I saw like there's almost going to be a deliverance and an awakening that's going to happen as God begins to take you deeper into the revelation of what does it look like for me to be hidden in Christ? What does it look like for me to be hidden uh, in God? It's not a, a necessarily, it's not a place of inactivity. It's actually a place of power. And, uh, and it's a place of transformation. So I really believe that there is going to be a powerful impartation that God is going to release uh, this morning. So, Nat, do you just want to start, like, sharing? What, what has God been speaking to you around this? And we'll just, Matt and I will jump in and we'll see what God, what he does. Sure. Well, um, I guess it also started for us a few weeks ago when we were chatting over um, Boxer and over text and everything about being feeling like we're being wooed into this hidden place um mm. i really do you know lana you and i've been talking and i've been spending time with god talking with him about it and everything and i really do feel like god is calling us into this hidden place at this time with everything that's going on around us in this world and all the instability and all the unknown and everything changing and all that he's, he's calling us into this quiet place and into this um this slow place and this still place with him and he's, he's beckoning us and he's just whispering to us like come away with me just come away with me mm. away from the busyness away yeah. from the noisiness because you know there's so much noise going on at the moment that we can get distracted with and away from it, anything that's trying to grab our attention and our focus and everything like this um at this time, it's just, I feel like it's so important to, um, you know, we're, we're all in isolation at the moment, but to even within isolation, to isolate ourselves even further, just, mm. just with him. Mm. Um, I know you've said it before a lot, Lana, and a lot of people are saying it, that this, this moment is like a, this really is a divine reset. 
Yeah. Um, and what we do with this time and how we steward this time mm -hmm. will sort of determine what, you know, who we are or what we come out as on the other side of it all. Um, and it's funny because, Lana, when you were speaking to me a few weeks ago um, and I, you brought this up and I, and then Facebook brought it up for me. You know how it, it really yeah. really does, like a year, a year ago, whatever the things are called, yeah. it came up with this. But about, yeah, it was a year ago, like um, in about April when... Um, mm -hmm. God spoke to me last year about, and he called it a cocoon. And he said, he said, come away with me into this hidden place. And he was speaking to me about this cocoon of transformation. Mm. And I felt an invitation from him even back then to just go away, to take a step back, yeah. um, to not do the things that I'd been doing for so long, to in just for the sake of being with him, for nothing else apart from yeah. being with him. So it's not that all this external outside stuff is wrong or anything like that but he's just he wants our hearts he just, that's right he wants us and he wants our hearts so much and mm -hmm. it's in this place where we go with him you know this this cocoon this place where we can just be with him all alone mm -hmm. where he does that that really deep deep work in us mm -hmm. you know we know the cocoon is the you just mentioned transformation before lana about mm -hmm. you know we will come out of this transformed and everything but yeah. you know the cocoon is the place where the caterpillar um you know it's a metamorphosis place that caterpillar turns into the butterfly and it's this mm -hmm. the cocoon is not just this hidden place but the cocoon is actually for the benefit of the caterpillar because when it's when it's in that place, it's at its most vulnerable. Yeah. You know, from prey, from coming to get it and all that sort of stuff, it's it's absolutely at its most vulnerable. Um, it is actually, and I didn't know that I didn't know all this stuff about caterpillars and butterflies until this time last year when I went and looked it all up. But the caterpillar, I didn't know this, the caterpillar actually literally dies. Yeah. It turns to goo. It like it I just thought it like the caterpillar grew wings and <laughs> You know that yeah. but it, it it literally dies inside this cocoon. So I don't know of any better example of mm. dying to your old self yeah. and coming alive in you know in the new in the spirit and all that sort of thing. But it is this place of complete um, transformation and renewal and dying to self. And when we're in those moments with God, we like we are at our most vulnerable, and we. Mm -hmm. He is protecting us by pulling us away mm -hmm. from everyone and everything. He really is protecting us. It's for our own good. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's by his grace and his love that he does that, mm -hmm. that to us so that we can have that time to be protected while we are, you know, being transformed by him and by his power and mm -hmm. by his love and everything like that. It's, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just... Um, it's not just, I, I sort of really want to hit on today too, it's not just about what we're hidden from, like mm -hmm. from the outside, but it's more important about what we're hidden in. Yeah. That's really what he's called. He's not, I mean, we can just become hermits. That's fine. Yeah. That's a different, you know, that's not what he's asking us to do. That's right. It's it, he's, He wants us to be hidden in him, mm. not just hidden from everything else, but hidden in him and to really, yeah. really abide in him. Mm. So I just, I do, I feel this wooing and I know you feel it and I know lots of people are feeling it um, at this time. I've actually had a lot of messages from a lot of people saying the same about, mm. I just feel God, you know, calling me away. And I'm just yeah. like, follow it, follow yeah. that lead, follow it. Yeah, that's really good. I even had somebody this morning who is um, is quite a prominent uh, voice in the body of Christ, and uh, and she said to me, you know, Lana, I just can't escape this feeling of this invitation to be um, hidden in Him, in the sense of like the place of revelation, the place where I am so deeply just in union with Him at a level that I've never been in before, and I'm just like that's what I feel like right now. It's almost like two things are happening. God is inviting us into this deep place. And in that deep place, he's transforming, he's awakening, identity is happening. You know, people are having their voices restored. Like it's just this beautiful transformation. Um, so I, I love what you're sharing. I think that's, you know, it's really a beautiful picture. And it was funny, even last night, oh no, was it last night or yesterday, Judah comes out to me and says, Mom, will you read this book to me? And I looked down and it was The Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ophelia has been, I've been reading that to her the past week. 
I'm not kidding. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and so I read him this thing, and at the end, what like he eats and eats and eats and eats and goes into a cocoon. What happens at the end? He becomes this beautiful butterfly. Right. And I was like, wow, you know, just the way that God speaks. Um, so yeah, Matt, do you have? Do you want to jump in? Are you sure? Feel, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep, the happy, happy caterpillar was one of our kids' faves as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I love that uh, metaphor you, you use there, Nat, and I I think that's such a cool uh, way of looking at the kingdom of God right now. Uh, that word restoration is one that we hear in churches and from pastors and leaders all the time at the moment. And my passion is to take that from just a word we hear to a word we encounter. Yeah. Uh, and the word that we encounter is the word that changes and transforms us as well. And I love how you speak out the concept that our old self has died like the caterpillar. I think there's too many um, too many of us who still wonder whether that's actually died our old self or not. Um, and uh, it's like we challenge what Christ did on that cross then if we actually believe for that. Um, so it's just this place where the Father is just a little, I feel like he's levelling some of those sort of thoughts and understandings and teachings to bring us back to that place like the caterpillar and go, okay, this is ground zero. This is a moment of rebuilding. This yeah. is a moment of restoration. You can't talk about a divine reset with knowing that everything has to turn off, right? Anyone who owns any concept of technology yeah. understands the power of the reset, Mm -hmm. um, before I was in ministry, I, I was an IT manager for an engineering company and I rose to the rank of genius just because of reset. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't tell anyone that at the time. It was just one of those brilliant moments of actually helping people to discover how to fix their computer oh, is yeah. to do a, a reset. But it's, it is, it's a ground zero mm -hmm. kind of moment. Mm -hmm. And I think like this is stuff that throughout all of time, we saw it when God led the Israelites out of Egypt. That was a ground zero moment. And when they got to the promised land, they were promised a whole range of things, safety, refuge, provision, uh, milk and honey flowing. And as you as you guys know that story, and then in the book of Hebrews, it's like he, he pulls out the same thing again and he goes, okay, this is now a time of rest again. And he talks to us and invites us. I love that way you said that, Lana. He invites us. He doesn't demand it. He, he doesn't push us into those places. He invites us. He leads us. And like even what you said, Nat, about wooing us, um, it's, it's again, it's a beautiful phrase of intimacy uh, to use the, this language of, of invitation or wooing. Uh, to what? To encounter. What does the encounter bring? It brings change and transformation. These aren't just words that we're speaking as if they should be spoken inside of churches and to Christians. These are now... Uh, I think they're God's words. I think when we speak it, even the three of us, even in this sort of broadcast, we speak it and we believe that the Father is creating as we're speaking. And so we speak restoration into every heart that is listening to this feed, every home, every marriage, every family. We speak it and believe for it that there is creation that's happening across the globe as we start adding our voices of belief, of faith, of power, of, of miracle uh, into the, this season that we're in and the reset just happens, the peace falls, love changes our lives and we're led into these places of rest. And so if, I love the language of the hidden uh, place and, and uh, anyone who's listened to some of the stuff we've done knows that I love the concept of Eden. I also love the concept of the, of, um, the throne room of heaven that we are invited into for this divine reset. It's like it's a place of safety. It's a place where the it's like the cocoon. It completely encapsulates you and allows you into a time where the Father wants to be the Father and is the Father. It's that love that encompasses you, that changes the way that you look at the world or the people that are around you. And there's a such a sense of, of newness uh, when you're in that in that concept and in that place of love. So yeah, I just so resonate with what you two are talking about this this morning. Yeah, and I think that's, it's so, like, it, it's such a beautiful place of, like, of invitation and, and encountering the Father and transformation. You think about it, like, you're hidden in Him and you have everything that you need, right? It's yeah. like your your life is found in that place, like in Christ. Um, and I know we've talked about this a lot, about how we feel like God is bringing us back to that, 
that place of nothing else but Jesus, right? Mm. It's just, it's all him. It's all about him. It's all about the relationship that is found uh, with him. And from that place, I find life. I find the reset. I find um, restoration. I find healing and freedom and everything else. And I want to share this quickly and then you guys jump in. Um, <clears throat> I had a dream. I haven't got my journal here, but it was probably about three weeks ago now. And, uh, well, I don't know if I can call it a dream. I was asleep and God was speaking. I wasn't hearing anything. I wasn't seeing anything. But the Lord was saying over and over all night long, he said, there is an invitation upon my people to cleave. And then when he would say cleave, he would then say, I'm shredding. And then I'm like, okay, what? <laughs> And all night long, it's going over and over and over in my spirit. And so I wake up and I look at the word cleave. Now, in um, I think this is just from Google. It says um, to cleave means to split or sever something, especially along a natural line or grain. I was like, oh, that's interesting considering he was saying cleave, I'm shredding, cleave, I'm shredding. Mm -hmm. And um, I then went to look at further and I came to I think this is from vocabulary.com and it says um, it can also be described as sticking to something like glue <laughs> and I was like how like what an amazing picture so here you have God saying there's an invitation to stick to me like glue like to cleave but also to be separate right, to be completely separated from something. And we know like straight away in my head I was like, oh, I know the scripture that talks about, you know, like um, you leave your father and mother and you cleave to your husband, right, or to your wife, whatever. Mm. Um, and I was like, oh, but I started to look up scriptures on cleaving and I was just blown out of the water. Um, and so I don't have time to go into it all now, but I kept thinking about Joshua 3, 5, right? And it says um, about consecrate yourself for tomorrow I'm going to do wonders among you. So this idea of being separate from anything um, and like that's not of God and consecrating myself, giving myself completely over to him. And so I want to just, I'm going to start with Moses and then I'm going to hand over to you guys. Um, in Exodus 33, now this is so, so cool. Uh, let me just get it up. I should have had it open already. <clears throat> uh, Exodus 33. Now I know this is going to be a little bit long, but just bear with me. I'm going to read to you. I think I'll probably go... Mm, I think I'll probably go verses 7. Um, I'll go verse 7 to 23 just because this is, like, so awesome. Okay, so I'm reading from the ESV. It says here, Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went outside to the tent, all of the people would rise up and each would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent and the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship each at his tent door. I just think that that's such a cool picture. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, he's a, uh, sorry, turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Moses said to the Lord, see you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have also found favour in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favour in your sight, please show me your ways that I may know you in order to find favour in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. 
For how shall it be known that I have found favour in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people from every other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do for you, for you have found favour in my sight and I know you by name. Moses said, please show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and you will proclaim, uh, sorry, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you will and you shall see my back, but not my face shall be seen. And I like I could sit in that story for the rest of my life, like honestly, like. <laughs> there's just so much in that like Moses is like show me your ways like let me understand your ways show me your glory and I found it really interesting that in this story um, Moses is hidden right in the cleft of the rock then there's this picture in first Kings uh, 19 I won't read it but it's the story of Elijah and uh, and he's in the cave right and uh, and he hears the the wind and the the uh, what what is it the wind and this um, fire goes by but the Lord wasn't in it but the Lord was in the whisper and and Elijah then pulls his mantle up over his face I know everybody knows these stories but please track with me and again there's this picture of this hiddenness right so you've got Moses you've got Elijah and then in Song of Songs 2 14 it says hide me in the cleft of the rock it's a picture of being hidden in the side of Jesus and so all of this I was looking at, and if you read these three stories, they actually cross-reference each other, like they all tie in. And so I'm beginning to read these and I'm like, oh, my goodness, so you've got Moses and the glory passing by. You've got Elijah and the Lord uh, passing by, I guess, in in oh, all these things passing by that weren't God, and then he comes in the whisper and Elijah responds by covering his face, this place of like respect and awe of who God is. And then you have this Song of Songs 214 of being invited into this place of hiddenness. So I'm like, God, what are you saying? And I began to see this pattern of God saying, you know, Lana, in, in all of these stories, you can see it with Moses and Elijah in the hidden place. Not only did they encounter me, but they were actually in a place of recognition of my presence my manifested presence right like the glory passes by Moses Elijah recognizes a whisper where he would have been used to like fire coming down from heaven right burning up altars but he in the mo place of encounter he hears this whisper and recognizes the Lord and comes out and in both of those stories out of the hidden place and encounter came instruction both of them moved into this place of instruction from the Lord. And so I was just like my head and my heart and my spirit are like, oh, this is like such a word. And so my little piece is, is this. I believe that God is calling us into a deeper place of hiddenness because he wants not only to bring transformation, but there is encounter um, in that hidden place that is restoring um sensitivity i would say to him to his presence to what if he shows up in a whisper and we're used to the fire we can recognize his voice and in this place we receive divine instruction from heaven so passing the conch <laughs> <laughs> so yeah what are you guys what's bubbling i'll go <laughs> um <laughs> yes We've spoken about this, but yes, yeah. absolutely feel that. And I think this is where the fine line is for everyone now going, you know, if they're feeling this wooing and feeling this invitation to come back, I mean, just as a society at large, we have this fear of missing out, don't we? Yes. But what I want to say is actually that's a good fear of missing out, except let's turn it around the other way. 
Because mm-hmm. I feel like if we don't come into this place with God, we will end up missing out on what mm-hmm. he has to yeah. give us in this time because it's not about what's been done or what all the big loud things or the everything mm-hmm. on our attention like you're saying, Lana, you know, with Elijah and everything like that. And it's not how it's always been done before. And in order to move forward, we have to, like you were saying, Matt, about the divine reset, everything has to, yeah, shut down and turn off. And we have to come in this place um, because of what he's got ahead of us, because of what's in store, because of what's on the other side. Mm. So when we, like, from when he asked me last year to go into this hidden place, I can tell you, there's so many questions going over in your head. Like it's not, it's not easy. It's not as easy as you think it is. Um, it's not comfortable. Um, you have to say no to a lot of things. And I'm telling you now, people will get offended. You will cause offense from obeying God at this time and and going away. Because it will like when when he tells you to do something, and Lana, we know this from experience, but when he tells you to do something, um, you actually have to follow through on that. And when, you know, people like, oh, come to this and do this, come and do this big opportunity and this big invitation. It's like, no, God's like God's told me to like to come back now. And that fear of missing out on all these things that are going by, um, you know, we're looking at that, we're looking at it from the wrong way. And we need to look, turn it around and go. What am I really going to miss out on here if I don't come away mm. into this hidden place with him and be with him? Because, Lana, like you are saying about that revelation that's available at this time, and not just available, I would say needed and essential, and that's exactly mm. what God wants to do right now. Yeah. Um, and, even, and last night just before I went to bed, I, I never know, I think I was just thinking about this talk this morning just mm. in my head, but I wasn't properly thinking through it and it just um god just dropped something in my heart and it was that and it's one of my favorite verses that i think about often but um you know when when mary was um in luke uh, luke 2 i think it is when you know the angel had just come to her and she's about to have the son of god and all this kind of stuff and look at all these amazing big things going on in her life and around her yet mary treasured these things in her heart she kept them between her and God and she pondered them often with God and it's this meditating on these treasures that he is giving us in this time and like you've said a lot Lana like not shouting them from the rooftop not you know running ahead too quickly because there's actually going to be so much more and these treasures that he's got for us in this time if we would just come away with him and be with him and cleave to him um it's just unbelievable and I, I think there's going to be so much more to come on the other side of this for everyone yeah for everyone and I really mean everyone like it's not yeah. just the prophets it's not just the big leaders it's That's right it's it's the it's every single person who has a hungry heart yeah. for God who just just wants him and just mm-hmm. wants Jesus and just wants that relationship and that intimacy and that quiet still place with him mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that's really good. Um, do you want to jump in, Matt? Sure. <laughs> Love that, Matt. Uh, the fear of missing out or FOMO. Mm-hmm. My kids would hate it that I just said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to use those kind of acronyms. <laughs> yeah. Apparently it's just not cool. <laughs> Anyways, um, I also want to add uh, just a bit to that too because I, I think that's such an interesting way of looking at the, the concept of the kingdom of God of fear of missing out. I think we also have this concept that it's too good to be true in, yeah. in so many of our churches or in our lives. And we hear what uh, Nat experiences God or encounters God or, or Lana or even Moses. And um, we go, oh, well, that's just not my experience nor my encounter. Mm-hmm. And so we opt for a lesser version of living out of the fullness of the kingdom mm-hmm. because we it's just like we don't allow ourselves to believe for that. Yeah. And uh, I think in the, these seasons that we actually are walking through, particularly here in Australia, where so much thing, so many things are changing in creation, mm. um, these are moments for us to stop and to think and to see and to revisit uh, as well. And I love the concept of bringing it back to Moses and Elijah as well, because those two dudes, my gosh, like um, they, there's so much revelation in both of their lives. And I love that both of them are real dudes, like, like they're just real humans that go, you know what, I've got some concerns and I've got some fears and I've got some worries and insecurities and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they allow 
us to see them. And I think that's such a helpful model for us as well, because if we only ever display the greatest hits of who we are, people will want to model that and not see the fullness of who we are when things aren't uh, going great, when there are where there were, heaviness is on us, where we are feeling anxious and we are, or even when we're feeling insecure. What I love about what you're bringing forward with Elijah and Moses as well is the place of conversation they had with the father. Um, and it just wasn't a monologue by the father, it's just say, here you go, go for it. Uh, it was a conversation and you saw it as a conversation. And part of the revelation for myself inside of that too is often I would, what I would do is I'd take hold of a verse of scripture as, as it was given to Moses, so I would use it for myself. And the father's like, can do that. How about if we have a conversation together and I give you some revelation as well? Yeah, you can cool. test it off the, the revelation that's been given before. Mm -hmm. But the revelation of Moses was given in a time and a season for the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel. I wonder what the revelation that's given to Lana today or to Nat today or to Matt today, mm -hmm. who will it impact? How far will it go? Um, what is that conversation that the Father is drawing us into? And in that conversation, it's not just a, a request and answer sort of moment. It's a relationship like you guys are saying, what you guys are leading us into. It's so beautiful what you both are uh, bringing to the kingdom of God. It's that that place of intimacy that we're being spoken to. And, and it's like God on top of a mountain can shake it, can burn it, can blow it. Uh, and every one of those things he can speak through on like, I've been on the planet long enough to go, God can speak through whatever he wants. But in both Moses and Elijah, let's have a conversation. Mm. Let's sit down face to face like friend to friend. That's the one of the most beautiful moments in for me in the Old Testament. Um, and it's just such a place of intimacy. And how privileged was Joshua just to stand there in that place and just receive as well. And then finally he becomes the dude that God just has this conversation with that yeah. just looks like intimacy. I, I just love it. So, yeah, so loving what you guys are saying. Yeah, and I love that. Like, And I'm, I'm really glad, like, you brought that up because I, I've often looked at that story of Moses and I always like have focused on Moses and oh wow yes like he's you know face to face and show me your glory and I want to know your ways and I, I'd read past the, the bit on Joshua and I just kind of keep going and one day <laughs> the Lord stopped me and he said hang on a sec Lana he said look at that scripture with Joshua and I was like oh my gosh like Joshua lingered right mm. he lingered in the presence like he was just like I'm not going anywhere <laughs> you know? like yeah. wow you know and just this yeah this beautiful place of it just so ties in like even what you're saying that like don't rush ahead you know don't be so busy that you've got your hands to all this stuff and um you and I and I know we've talked about this too Matt about you know right now it can be easy to fill the time with things you know because oh we're at home and we've been at home for so long and okay so I'm going to do this and this and this well there's nothing wrong with building let's just make sure what we're building is actually what God is building um and so I just, yeah, I feel like what you guys are saying is so right. Like there's just such a place of invitation where at the end of the day, all I want is to be face to face with him. Like all I want is like what you're saying, Matt, like to have this place of conversation, you know, mm -hmm. like my goodness, I know I say this all the time and I'm going to say it again, but <laughs> like let's take two minutes in our day to kind of go, let me just think about the person that I'm actually talking to right now. Yeah. Like, you know, like it's not the milkman, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's the, the king of kings and it's, he's the Lord of lords. And um, I, I just love, Nat, you were saying about you said something like, uh, oh, Mary, about pondering um, in her heart. And I just, I love that because I wrote this down. I heard God say this isn't a time to parade. It's a time to position. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, like that, isn't that, in, like it's just such a beautiful picture of the hidden place. I What do I value more? Like am I sitting with the Lord and receiving these words and then going and parading them everywhere or parading my encounters or whatever, or am I actually sitting with him and receiving and then I'm just stopping and realising who it is that's spoken to me, what he's releasing to me and treasuring it in my heart. You know, like placing value upon 
what the Lord is speaking. And I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it because it's bugging me. Um, but I feel like we are coming into a time through this shaking where God is going to add uh, greater fear of the Lord to the revelation that he releases, that it's not to be cheapened by just thrown out anywhere and everywhere, but it's actually the most precious thing to be stewarded and, and pondered in my heart and then I'm led by the Spirit to share or to not share. Um, I think that, yeah, we're just we're coming into a time where God is really um, I'm not saying that there's things wrong with sharing, but we know that the Bible even says, you know, don't cast your pearls before swine. Like there's a very real place of not everything God tells me I meant to share, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of this hidden place right now is not only is God aligning us and going, hey, do you really want me above all else? Um, there's this downpour of revelation and we have to be asking the question, okay, Lord, what what is it that you want me to share and what am I not to share? Um, so, yeah, anyway, I'm taking I think time. Going on from that and with the Mary stuff as well, I think what you're talking about there and it, tying this in also to the fear of the Lord, mm. it brings a, it develops a humility mm. that when you realise who is speaking to you yeah. and like you said, you're not just going to go and throw it away to anyone but that's what Mary that's what Mary had like she you know not only was she carrying the son of god in her belly yeah. um but she you know she'd heard from god and all of you know this has been after hundreds of years of no one hearing from god mm -hmm. you know in all that time mm -hmm. and she you know i mean look she she could have just gone off and said i'm carrying the savior of the world yeah. and you know yeah. but but she didn't. She, yeah. We look at her as such a humble person and that verse, I believe, is one of the keys to understanding who she was and her character and her nature, that she was um, so humble and, and living in this humility and that's like tying in line with what you're saying about what God shares with us. It's not the revelation. It's not about what we get, the revelation. Mm -hmm. it's, yes, it's amazing and it will blow our minds and, you know, it transforms us and everything. Mm -hmm. But the deeper part of that is going, my goodness, the God of the universe is speaking to me. Yeah. And that's when, when we have that humility, I believe that's that's when we have the fear of God. Mm. Because we're like, who are you to, you know, to mm. speak to me? Mm. Um, and it just puts it that in that perspective. Mm. And we do come before him in so much more awe and so much more mm. holy fear and everything because it, the the conversation I guess in the process and that relationship mm. humbles us in the most beautiful way and then then because we treasure that properly we do steward that better because it is a treasure in our heart yeah. having like the relationship with God and hearing from God is mm. treasure above yeah. the treasures of the revelation and everything like that too yeah mm. Yeah, I think that's really good. And I think that, you know, I, just while you're talking, I'm like, there's so much God's doing. Like, I feel like we're almost like in this place where what you're saying as far as, um, you know, pondering and and don't share too quickly and be followed by the, the, the prompting of the spirit. So we're in this place, in the hidden place. And then somehow at the same time, I feel like God is restoring voices like of people that maybe have had fear of like not speaking out or I don't hear from God or do you know what I mean? Like, so I feel like I'm kind of in this, like, it's this and it's this, like, and isn't it just like God, right? Like it's just this place almost like, can I say it this way? Maybe like God's inviting us deeper into this place of, of he, be, hidden in him. What does it look like to be hidden, to find our life in him, to find all of everything found in Jesus I'm receiving revelation out of the fear of the Lord. I'm awakened to the fact that it's God that's speaking to me. And as I'm encountering God in the revelation of who he is, I'm finding my identity so then I'm finding my voice. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that's caged me is being delivered off me, like it's breaking off me. So like the preparation is actually the positioning so that I can be who I'm called to be. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm. No, Matt, because I know that. <laughs> uh, it's and that's. I'm intrigued with that conversation, Lana, um, because, like, I've been doing deliverance for, as you know, for over 20 years, yeah. and people come to me for deliverance all the time. And the further I go into it, 
the more that I see that so much deliverance happens through the revelation of our identity. Mm. Like if I talk to either one of you two from an identity point of view, a relationship, uh, like it it just quickens. Um, if I talk to you from where you come in the country or where you are, or mm. it's just like, oh, okay, it's just another conversation. But if I speak to both of your identities uh, and both of you, the two of you carry such uh, uh, a heavy concept of the kingdom of God and the revelation of the Father is placed on both of you. And so when you talk, people want to hear. Mm. They want to hear it because you've had a place of encounter, at that moment of encounter, which is given to you revelation. And for both of you, you've come into a place of your identity is now seen. Mm. Uh, deliverance happens when identity is presented. And the Father, I think, has always placed that upon us for us to discover it. Mm. Not, not that he's hiding it from us like a, a bad father, but he wants us to learn and to grow and to discover mm. who we actually truly are. And I think that happens so powerfully in, com in community. Mm. And see, when we're doing community well and we're doing intimacy well with each other, deliverance is just happening uh, without even a structure around it yeah. other than just loving the person beside you. Mm. Now, for someone who's done deliverance for so long, you go, was it really that simple? Mm. Um, and there's such a truth in that it is mm. as a child loves so that we can love. The kingdom is presented through the wisdom of a child and the way that the father can re re release it upon a child. Mm. Um, if we could get the concept of, of love and trust uh, and that leads us into these places of safety and intimacy, deliverance just happens. Mm. And so for me, deliverance is all about being free. Mm. Uh, truth sets us free. Mm. And freedom flows in these places of power and authority mm. once the revelation uh, comes. And see, I think revelation is not just about what you hear, it's what it does. Yeah. Like we can fill the internet up with really cool little phrases of what revelation is, mm. but it's what revelation does. Mm. That's the power of it. Uh, and and I, I don't know about you guys, but I would have rather have one word of revelation that continue to transform my life and my world mm. than a whole range of other understandings of the kingdom of God. I just want the Father to speak those places of revelation and identity to me and to live out of that place of fullness. Mm. Um, and it's kind of called a secret place, but I think the Father's going, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's here. <laughs> it's it's like, but we've, we've put religion around it. We've, we've wrapped religion around our conversation and told people, this is how you come to God. And mm. God's like, no, 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 no. You just received the invitation. I'm loving you. You're loving me. Yeah. We're going deeper. Yeah. I'm talking. I'm revealing. And it's just, and uh, I just, I'm so excited for it. I could speak all day on that. No, that's awesome. And, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be really real right now but I had like then this is so like I just so feel the Holy Spirit on what you're saying Matt because I had a an experience this week where um I was dealing with something in the natural and I'm like this is not part of my inheritance right this is not this is like the enemy this is like the enemy's trying to steal from me but as much as I pushed against this thing it would push back 10 times harder and so I went and I sat with the Lord and I'm like God what's going on and instantly the Lord took me back to a memory in my life where trauma had come and and right. found its its place in my heart and my life in this particular moment and I'm sitting there and I'm looking like in my mind's eye at this memory and I can feel every emotion mm -hmm. that I yeah. felt in this memory and I'm like wow the enemy's finding a landing pad on the trauma that has fallen on my on this particular situation so I said Said to the Lord God what do you want me to pray they were my words and he said nothing and I said what and he said nothing just ask me where I was and wow. I said oh okay and oh makes me emotional he said to, and I said okay Lord where were you and instantly I saw Jesus walk into the room and it was in the revelation of him walking into the room and he said now ask me what I'm sa what I said in that moment and I said, okay, Lord, what did you say in that moment where I was in trauma? And he spoke these words of truth and instantly, like I was sobbing, everything shifted, like everything in my mind, in my heart, in that moment where potentially I was in this place of like, like carrying trauma, like I got it in a second because the revelation of who Jesus was and what he spoke shifted the atmosphere and I felt like the trauma just left. And at the end of this encounter, 
I saw Jesus walk to the door of this memory and he closed it and he put a, 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 a thick iron bar across it and he locked it. And with and then all of a sudden I saw this big red circle over the door and it said Jesus was here and it was in red. <laughs> and I knew that it was, it was by his blood. And he's like, Lana, I've sealed the door. He said, the enemy can't access this anymore. I've removed the trauma, he said, and it, it's done, like it's sealed. And that had such impact on me because, number one, that was in my place with the Lord. Like nobody else, I'm not discounting deliverance ministry. Like, Matt, what you do is incredible. And like, but it was in the revelation of Jesus mm -hmm. and what he spoke that, changed everything and i'm like wow so whether i'm sitting in a room with you matt and and god's ministering to me through you and he speaks or whether i'm on my own sitting in my prayer room the common denominator is he spoke he showed up and i was yes. delivered and i was so good isn't that incredible yeah. oh so yeah anyway. that's our design yeah mm. Go yeah, no. uh, matt you're probably you probably have more insight into this than I do just because of what you do. But I feel like, Lana, that there is like there is a quickening and an acceleration with us being delivered from what, what you were saying, Matt, about like going in, um, growing into wholeness. Like it's time to, I just feel like I've heard this for a long time. It's time for mature Christians. It's time. We can't keep living on milk. We can't keep living the way we have been. And I think that's part of what this process is all about is God going, okay, once and for all, let's get rid of this stuff. I'm not saying we're never going to go through experiences again that's going to bring up more stuff and, you know, all that kind of stuff, all that sort of thing. But he's, he's wanting to just deal with things that have been so, like, big in our life once and for all. And I find for myself, like, I look back over the past year, um, two years even, and I, I feel like I've grown more in one year than I have in 10 years and been delivered from more things in a moment than I have in, you know, months and months of trying to work through it. And Matt, I know like with what you do with the prayer ministry and everything like that, they're just like, I don't know, do you find that there's an acceleration and a quickening of that happening within God's like yeah. you know, people? Yeah. It's, it's so interesting that like um, when I was at um, Awakening, I don't know if I've shared this with you before, Lana, but Bill Johnson pulls out a cracking phrase yeah. and I'll paraphrase this poorly so people can look up and quote it. But he talked about what learnt, what is learned in 30 years will now be passed on in months. Yeah. And uh, I remember sitting there just going, wow, I've been in this for that long. I've been doing this for that long. And now it's like he's rolling out a red carpet just saying now it's time to pass this on quickly. Um, and so these moments of quickening, um, I've always, what I'm finding recently is moments of quickening are followed by moments of rest. Wow. wow. Often, often we want to go quickening, 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 mm -hmm. quickening, quickening, um, because we want con those big revelations that change and transform our lives. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, uh, I think the father has us in a rhythm, uh, and that rhythm goes quickening, then some rest, quickening, yeah. then some rest. It allows us to, to ground ourselves in that place of what the revelation was mm -hmm. so that it can become part of our belief system and not just a cool moment in life. And so, Lana, for moments like what you've just so powerfully and vulnerably shared, I just want to honour that. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to cry mm -hmm. because that that is powerful. Mm -hmm. That is what the Father does. Mm -hmm. This is not a fairy tale. This is not just something that's only happened to Lana Vorsa. Uh, this is something that happens day after day after day as people are willing to be vulnerable and to, to let the Father into those places and to see what Jesus does. It's kind of the way we teach people to navigate nightmares. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine Jesus in that moment. Yeah. Let's draw Jesus into that moment. If you do it for your kids, wait and see your kids' imagination absolutely fire with the kingdom of god because they know who jesus is he's there to redeem he's there to heal he's there to restore it is so powerful and so as adults we get scared of those moments and those big doors with the big locks and the, we don't want to go through there because we don't know want to know what that is and all of a sudden lana you find yourself there with a very confronting vision mm. but then you've got a very powerful savior who wants to do something about that trauma and he wants to heal and he wants when he heals he wants to restore to a place of strength and courage mm -hmm. and so now you have an authority to speak in those places like you are doing right now so just want to honor you and say thank you 
Thanks, Matt. That's beautiful. I, you know, just what you said then, you said about restore. I, ne I need to say this because this, I knew this here, but now I know it here. Yeah. Like in that moment, I saw Jesus and he began and he said, ask me what I said. And so I asked him and he began to share all this stuff. But one thing that hit me was he said to me, do you know right now in this moment, he was speaking as if we we're back in the moment, right now in this moment, I have already decreed your restoration. And I've yep. already decreed like the payback that is coming to you while you are still experiencing this moment. So it's not like I'm, you know, because this was like 11 years ago. So it's not like God's like, okay, so now that you're here 11 years down the track, I'm speaking restoration. No, in the, in the midst of the enemy trying to steal, kill and destroy from you, in that moment I was standing with you and I was comforting you, I was loving you, but I was also speaking that you are going to receive sevenfold restoration for what the enemy's done to you. In that moment, I'm already saying to you, I've planned the restoration. Oh, it just makes me emotional of what of what is going to be given to you. So it's not like, you know what I mean? Like it's already in that moment he reveals like I've already made the way. Like I've already yeah. seen what the enemy's tried to do and I've already planned the way that the restoration is going to come to you. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, you know, to live in that place of such awakening to the goodness of God, like, and the love of God, that even when the enemy tries to steal, kill and destroy from us, the Lord's already in that place. And he's like, well, you just, you just wait for the restoration that I have for you and the healing and the freedom. Like it's not, I, I'm already in that place because he's out of time, you know, mm. and I just think far out, like, if anything else, in the time that God is wooing us into this place, this hidden place, like may we be so vulnerable before the Lord to, to pray that prayer in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. You know, God, come examine my heart. If there's anything, you know, come and deal with it and not to be afraid of it because in that place we find life because Jesus steps in. Okay. Oh, powerful. Anyway. Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. So good, Lana. So good. Yeah. So, you guys, anything else bubbling that you'd like to share before we uh, we pray? Let me just affirm what you just said there, Lana. The concept of the Father doing and the Father, what the Father has already done. Mm. Um, it's in Hebrews where he talks about he has already perfected us. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty confronting phrase for most people to grab their wrap their brains around. But the word perfection in the Bible means to be complete and whole. Mm. And so through Christ, he has poured out every spiritual blessing upon us. And so we have received more than we can imagine. Mm. And even through times of trauma, he's pouring out his restoration and he's already done so. Mm. And he's now drawing us into a place of revelation, which unpacks that mm. and draws us into a place of uh of greater understanding and awareness of the wholeness that he's got for us, mm. uh, which I think is rest. And I think that's the, to me, that's the throne room. That's the place the Father's called us all into, to walk boldly into, as the writer would say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. And I think that's in the midst of this hidden place. I think that's one of one of the things that God is is really doing, isn't it? He's bringing us into that place of rest in the throne room. This, yeah, this moment of just being before him and yeah. place of transformation and anything in here that's any storms on the inside, you know, he's bringing us to a place of deeper rest in the revelation of who he is and yes. his word. And, yeah, it's really good. Nat, have you got anything you want to end with? Um, just with that, I think I think that's what kind of what you're both saying there in line of what you were just sharing before. I think that's often, whether we realise it or not, um, uh, we're hesitant to come into the hidden place because there's mm. something in us that is fearful of what's God going to bring up? What am I going to feel? Mm. Yeah. And it might not be a conscious thought, you know, mm. but there might just be something deep down in us going, oh, I know. Mm. I love the sound of coming away with God and being hidden with God, but I'm yeah. there's something in me that's scared of what's going to come up and out and what's he going to put his finger on yeah. and what's yeah. he going to deal with. And, and you know, in our self-protection mode, we don't want, that to happen so we busy ourselves and we keep going or we think we're hidden or we think we're rested and we're stopped but 
it, like coming back to what Matt was saying before, like about this, he wants us whole and he wants us healed mm. and he wants us set free. And yeah, it will be painful and it will hurt sometimes. Mm. But the more we keep those things suppressed and undealt with, the longer that pain is going to keep growing and brewing and it's going to be dealt with eventually. So, you know, do it, deal with it now and just don't be afraid of that. And like, he's a loving father. He's a loving father and he wants to deal with that because he wants you free. He doesn't want to torture you with the pain. He doesn't want to make it hard. He wants to pull that out. You know, he wants to pull the thorn out. He wants to do that and to heal that. So I think, you know, don't um, in this calling to and this invitation to come away with him, to not be afraid of what's going to come up and out and just, you know, to let him do his work in you, his deep work in you. Um, yeah. And it comes back to like, Matt, what you were just saying then about this re like rest and everything. And I think what God wants to build on in this future is whatever he does in us and through us and in his kingdom now is going to be based on this place of rest. It's going to come from rest. It's not going to come from striving and trying and building and creating. And even though it will involve like creating and building and all those things, the deepest place it's going to come from is from us just resting, resting in mm. and living in him. And he's going to do that work out of us and through us and, and throughout his kingdom. So I think it's time to sort of summarise everything of what I've shared today at least and what we're talking about. Um, we're called to this place because he wants us to come back to that to that rhythm and find that rhythm again. Like I love what you said, Matt, about the, you know, the rhythm of the doing the work and then the rest and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. This this just finding that rhythm that he's calling us to and the rhythm of his heartbeat. It, that's mm -hmm. where we need to be. We need to be so close to him. We yeah. need to be having our you know our our head on his chest. We need to be so in tune with him and what he's doing every step of the way that we're walking in rhythm with him from mm -hmm. this point onwards in this time. And that's what this wooing to the hidden place is all about ultimately. Yeah, I think that's amazing. And, you know, guys, I want to say this, that if you hear nothing else out of today, like hear this, that there is an invitation that is, is upon us right now where God is calling us to go deeper and, uh, and to really, it's not a place of, oh, okay, like I have to obey God. No, no, no. It's this beautiful wooing of the heart of God that he wants to bring us further into his love. He wants to bring us into that place of such incredible encounter with him where we see him in his glory, where we see him in his majesty, where we're transformed in the place of seeing Jesus. Like, so simple isn't it but it's it's the truth it's the the place of i believe the reset that's happening right now is in the place of bringing us into deeper alignment with who he is and with what he speaks and who he is and in that place we find freedom we find identity we find awakening we find revival we find everything in him and I think we've known that for so long. We hear it preached. We've read it in the word. But I really feel like this is a moment where God is awakening us to the reality of in him, right? In him we live, we move, we have our being, hmm. right? It's all about Jesus. How often have you heard that phrase being thrown around? It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Well, hang on. It actually is. <laughs> it's in him it, like we find everything. So in our relationship with him, we find life, we find abundance, we find all of those glorious things. So I want to encourage you um, right now to really, um, really just follow the wooing of the Holy Spirit, whatever that looks like for you. What does the hidden place look like for you right now? It may look different to what it looks like for Matt or, or for Nat and I, but I really believe it's about the heart that God is calling mm. us to that place where he's saying, hey, yeah. I've got more for you right now, and uh, and and it's just that's that's that place of consecration, and in that positioning, I really believe that there are life changing encounters uh, with Jesus in this moment that you will look back at this moment and go, wow, like you know what, so much changed in my life in that time. And I know in the natural we're, we're beginning to go back to life as normal, even though I don't believe life is ever going to go back to normal. There's going to be a new normal now. Yeah. Um, but as restrictions are lifted and all of these things, I believe God is highlighting 
the hidden place. What is the hidden place? What does it look like? Because we're actually called to live in that place all the time. You know, sometimes some seasons it can look like that real coming away and being, you know, saying no to a lot of things. But in other seasons, you know, it looks different. And I just, I really feel like God is is asking the question, okay, what does it look like to be hidden in me? Well, it looks like trust. It looks mm. like, you know, knowing who you are. It looks like in a time of plagues and crisis that I go, no, Psalm 91 is my place of mm. that's my reality. I'm not living by this and what I can touch, feel, smell. My reality is in him. I'm hidden in Christ. What does that mean? And so as you've watched this broadcast, I really pray that um, that God has spoken to you, that he's ministered to you, that he's awakened that fire uh, even more inside of you and the hunger to know him and uh, and to really just look into his eyes and to give him your yes um, above everything else. Let, let our yes to Jesus be greater, our greatest yes. May we not give a yes to anything else but to, to him first and foremost. Hmm. So uh, let's pray, Matt. Would you start and then Nat join in and I'll, I'll close? Because, um, yeah, sure. I really feel especially like what you were talking about, the whole thing with um, acceleration like um, and healing and different things. I just feel like you're really carrying that. So, yeah. Yep, sure. Pray. Cool. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And so just as we come into this time, I just want you to use your imaginations once again. Find yourself in a place that is safe in your imagination by a beach or on a mountain or in a field, wherever it is that you feel safe. Allow your imagination to feel out the things that are around you, the breeze, the sun, maybe the rain or the stillness. And then just invite Jesus into that moment, much like what Lana did in that moment of trauma. Jesus, you are already there. Allow Jesus to come to sit with you or stand with you. Allow him to place his hand upon you. Even place your hand where he puts his hand and let the presence of your hand be a double portion of healing and restoring whatever it is that the, that the Father is touching through Christ. And I pray that today, as people watch, there will be a quickening of their spirit. Uh, Jesus, that ears will be open to what it is that you want to talk with us about. May they have a Moses moment where you sit with them face to face and speak the things of the kingdom and of life and of healing and restoration in. But Jesus, I thank you for opportunities where we can sit with you and to know that you are there and that your life flows through us. And so today, Jesus, the rhythm of the quickening and the rhythm of rest, let them be one that you will transform and change and we will rest and know. So, Father, I thank you for this opportunity and moment. May your blessing rest over Lana and that and their families and that your peace rest over their homes today. In Jesus' name. Lord, we just want to give you our yes. We just want to give you our heart, God. We just want to say no to all else except for that voice that is beckoning us, mm. that one voice, that, that voice that just might be the quietest voice amongst all the noise around us. We ask that you would tune our heart and our ears and our eyes into you, that we can see and hear and feel your wooing and your inviting and that we can follow that. God, I just pray for any hindrances in that, anything within our um, hearts that might be resisting, anything within our minds that might be, you know, trying to talk us out of it or trying to, um, you know, just tell us that you know, there's so much to do and there's so many other things going on and you can't do this and you can't do that. And, God, we just silence those voices and those mm. that confusion and that chaos that goes around us sometimes. And, Lord, we just want to say yes to the call right now. Mm. We want to give you our everything, Lord. And above all, we just we want to encounter you. We want to encounter you as a person, as our father, as our saviour, as our best friend. We want to encounter you. We want to read our word and have you speak to us, your, your breath 
so close to us that we can hear you. We can hear what you're saying to us, Lord, to us personally and to our hearts and to our each of our own circumstances that we're experiencing and going through. We come away to this hidden place and we ask that in, the do, in doing that, that you would wrap us in your cocoon, that you would mm. um, encircle us and protect us, that we can open up and give you our most vulnerable being, that we can come and let everything in us die and come alive again in you, truly in you by your mm. spirit. Transform us in this place, in this hidden place. Let us treasure the moments we have with you, the encounters we have with you, the intimacy that we experience in this time. That Let us treasure that in our hearts and hold it so close to us and shield it from anyone else that we can just protect that from, you know, the treasure that you give us to protect that and to hold that so dearly to ourselves, Lord. God, we are believing for such a transforming time right now over these next few days, weeks and months and even the next few years, Lord, for what you are doing in your kingdom and what you are doing in this world and what you are doing in your church and what you are doing in each and every one of our hearts, Lord. We say yes. We say yes to that call and we just we give you all of ourselves, Lord. We lay all of ourselves down on the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord, we thank you for who you are, Lord. We praise you, Jesus, for just how amazing you are, Lord God. We praise you, God, that you gave everything for us, Lord Jesus, at Calvary, Lord, that you didn't hold anything back, Lord, that out of your, your incredible love for us, Lord God, that you laid down your life, Lord God, so that we could know you. God, we say thank you. Jesus, we say thank you for your sacrifice, Lord God, so that we can know you and make you known in this earth, Lord, that we can walk in in life and life abundantly. Lord, I pray for every person, Lord God, that will watch this broadcast. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would take them deeper, Lord God, by your spirit into who you are, Lord God, into the revelation of who you are, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that your word says in Jeremiah 33, 3, that we can call to you and, uh, and ask you great things and you will show us great and mighty things, Lord, that we do not yet know. Lord, I pray that this would be a time of, of just stillness uh, before you, Lord God, that they would sit at your feet like Mary, Lord Jesus, and just listen to what the Spirit is saying, Lord God. I pray that you would just continue to reveal great mysteries to them in this time. Lord, I pray that in that place of just sitting before you, Lord God, and listening to what you're saying, Lord, I pray for healing in hearts and in minds and in bodies, Lord God. I pray for great deliverance and great freedom and great restoration. Lord, I pray that this would be a time of an incredible move of your spirit, Lord God, that brings alignment, Lord, in the manifestation of, of your word and what you're speaking. Yes. Lord, Thank you, God. I just I just see right now that there's been just so many uh, words that that many of you have had that God has been speaking over your life that you've held on to for so long, and now is the time where the power of God is going to meet that circumstance. It's going to meet your body. It's going to meet your mind. It's going to meet your heart. And you're going to feel the surge of the Holy Spirit, the power of his spirit that's going to come upon you. And you're going to begin to rise up and walk. That this thing is no longer going to hold you down and cripple you. But this is a time where the healing and the freedom and the breakthrough and the manifestation of the word of God that has been spoken over your life by the Lord himself is going to manifest in your life hmm. so god i thank you that this is a time of manifestation lord god for many that have been holding on to your promise and lord hmm. i pray refreshment over them today in the name of jesus i pray that they would be so refreshed in their hearts lord god that they would be so rested in who you are they would be so rested lord jesus in the revelation of your nature and the power of your word God, we bless you today. We love you, Jesus. And as Nat said, we say yes to you again. Lord, we say yes. Lord, that our yes to you is our greatest yes, Lord God, that we would see you, Lord God, in your glory. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit, into mm -hmm. our lives in a deeper way to do whatever it is that you want mm -hmm. to bring glory to your name. 
We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks, guys. That was fun. That was great. Thank you. Very for cool. Me. Mm. It was very cool. Thank you for inviting us. Yes, Lana, as always. Mm. Joy. <laughs> always a joy. Well, my friends, will you quickly um, just give people some details of um, how they can uh, follow you, contact you um, if they don't know you, and that also if you could share your book, that would be amazing. So whoever wants to go first, jump in. You go first, Matt. I'll just get myself ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so all of my teachings and uh, you can follow me on Haberfield Baptist Church, uh, both on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, also YouTube. Um, I do a thing called prophetic mentoring. Uh, so if you want to interested in hearing more of the voice of God, you can do that. I'm currently doing some teaching on dream interpretation on Facebook Live, and you can see the last couple of weeks as well. But, yep, Haberfield Baptist Church. So good. I encourage you guys to jump on and follow Matt, grab the teaching and those lives. You, you need to watch those. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie. Okay. Um, you can, uh, I have a website, nataliefuller.co, C-O, um, and which is also my Instagram name. So I made that nice and simple, <laughs> nataliefuller.co. Um, and I'm trying to find my book on Gavin's iPad, but I can't figure out. Oh. You can't unlock his iPad. <laughs> anyway, so I do I have a book called Position for Purpose, um, which you can purchase on my website. Mm -hmm. And I've just started a study as of yesterday. Ooh. And it's really funny because I was just thinking as we were all talking, a lot of what we've spoken about today was actually in the first, like I released that last night of the first week of the study of um, for the book. And so we're going through my book and the book of Esther at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of what we've shared today is almost, yeah, it's very, very similar to what, uh, to what I've got in that first um, video and first session of the study. So, yeah. yeah. And also on Facebook, it's all the same, Natalie Fuller. So, yeah. Okay. Awesome, guys. Well, friends, I encourage you, if you haven't got Nat's book already, get it. It's called Position for Purpose. I wish I had my iPad here so I could show you, but I don't. It's amazing. And uh, and join in. Can they join on the study now? Yes, like you can stuff? join in at any time. Um, it's like I'm just releasing it week by week, but you can join in any time. You can do it later. You can do it now. You can't do it all at once, though, because I am making yeah. it weekly because there is a, it's pretty full on. It's um a lot of questions to be you know thinking through and a lot of kind of the stuff we were talking about today that you really search your soul so i want you to go slowly through it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well guys i encourage you to to jump in on that nat's book is incredible and i know that the study is going to be off the charts i've signed up for the study i can't wait to do it so it's going to be awesome so all right guys thank you love you both lots thank you so much again for joining me it's always fun Thank you. Um, no worries. And uh, all right, guys, everybody watching, have a wonderful day, morning, evening, whatever time of day it is uh, when you watch this. And uh, we will hopefully do another one of these again soon. Okay? Bless you heaps. Bye. <laughs>